Hello and welcome to The Report, Cal State Fullerton's premier source for news, views, and info. Thank you for joining us on our fourth episode of the semester. I'm Nicholas Garcia. I'm Sarah Fenton. And I'm Evan Boydston. On today's episode, we will discuss Michelle Obama's speech to the public regarding the hostility that this year's election has created. Plus, we'll discuss CEDAW and the international laws that have been implemented for women's rights. Also, we'll give you the latest update on the rape case dismissal against Derrick Rose, the NBA player for the New York Knicks. All this and more on today's episode of The Report. Before we delve into our first hot topic, we would like to invite you to be a part of the discussion this semester season. Click on the link in the caption of any of our report episodes to fill out a secure Google form with your opinion on any controversial issue that we've talked about now or in the past. As many of these issues are reoccurring and evolving, ranging from gun control to abortion, climate change, or the state of politics right now. All we ask is to please keep it civil and as with any essay, cite your sources. The First Lady Michelle Obama stepped on the podium at a campaign rally for Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. No public figure has so effectively captured how this moment has made many American women feel. Obama's speech will go down as one of the most important speeches of this political cycle. Take a look at a few highlighted clips from her speech. I think we can all agree that this has been a rough week in an already rough election out on the campaign trail in an election where we have consistently been hearing hurtful, hateful language about women. Language that has been painful for so many of us, not just as women, but as parents trying to protect our children and raise them to be caring, respectful adults. And last week, we saw this candidate actually bragging about sexually assaulting women. And I can't believe that I'm saying that a candidate for president of the United States has bragged about sexually assaulting women. And I have to tell you that I, I can't stop thinking about this. This is not something that we can ignore. It's not something we can just sweep under the rug as just another disturbing footnote in a sad election season. Because this was not just a lewd conversation. This wasn't just locker room banter. This was a powerful individual speaking freely and openly about sexually predatory behavior. Her speech reflected just how much Trump's remarks affected her. Obama said, quote, strong men don't need to put down women to make themselves feel powerful, end quote. This speech is more than just politics. It's more about human decency. This election has been filled with lewd talk from Trump and a series of allegations by women who say the Republican presidential nominee groped them in the past 30 years. Obama said this is enough. It is bad for women, yes, but it's also bad for all of us. Obama aims to speak to a shared humanity that we could all use more of, no matter our political inclinations. What does this say as Obama speaks on behalf of women's rights to our society? Well, I mean, I think he's definitely addressing an important issue that's been going on that we're all starting to realize now. Um, I know our, our parents just grew up in a different time than what we're growing up in right now, so of course it's going to seem like we hear, hear about um, how women in society are treated as second-class citizens, which um, they essentially kind of have been in a way, not, not, not exactly like how it, how it is in other countries, but mm -hmm. still just that, that women still just get the, the um, low end of the totem pole because that it's just it's been ingrained in our society for some reason. And I think it's important that our generation is kind of addressing these, these issues and making sure that they are known and making sure that, that we don't keep perpetuating the problem because it's a paradox right now. Once we keep making women feel this way, it's just going to continue this way. Yeah. So I 100% agree with her. Trump tried to dismiss this as, oh, this is just locker room talk. What locker room has he been in that there's talk going on like this? I've talked to my dad. I've talked to my boyfriend, who are both athletes and have spent years in the locker room. Mm -hmm. They say no man 
talks about sexually assaulting a woman in a locker room. Yeah, sure, they may talk about their girlfriends or they may talk about this girl that they went on a date with, but no one talks about sexually assaulting a woman. Anyone that does that is not right in their mind. Mm. There's just no excuse for that. I don't know why he would think it's okay to go on and say the things that he said. It disgusts me and I hate it. No. But she's 100% correct. And I think that your feeling of hating it and our feeling of hating it is exactly what most of the American people are feeling. And Michelle Obama really embodied that in that speech. She said what we were all feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, she said that the measurement of any society is how it treats its girls and women. And you would think that we were talking about a third world country. We thought, you would think that we were talking about Saudi Arabia. And we're mm -hmm. talking about the United States and the political campaign that's happening right now. And that's unacceptable. Here's my thing, because I, I'm in a fraternity and there's, there's a, obviously a negative social st stigma of fraternities, but we don't even talk like that at all. And I, I think I like I pride, I pride myself on how how well our our uh, like the character of our fraternity, and it's just it's very unfortunate because he is pretty much classifying, he's pretty much making all men just under this under this mm -hmm. umbrella of just this, yeah. these negative remarks and whatnot. So it's just it's unfortunate because now we're obviously fight, fighting a, an uphill battle, regardless of of even the, even though we're decent people Absolutely. too. Absolutely, no, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. It's an insult to mm -hmm. yeah. decent men. And women everywhere. Yeah. It's an insult to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's not acceptable. Carrying on with our discussion on women's rights, CEDA, the Committee for the Convention of the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, has observed that the ethnic minority women, elderly, disabled, and migrant women, women in prisons, and women on the street are particularly vulnerable to disadvantage and discrimination. National courts continue to struggle on how to properly evaluate and to take account of different intersectional discrimination. CEDAW and the CEDAW Committee has adopted an extensive approach to intersectional discrimination that is based on accomplishing gender equality. CEDAW protects a woman who encounters discrimination in relation to an identity, experience, or a problem that interacts with sex or gender. It uses women, race, and poverty as a case study to assess how it plans to eliminate intersectional discrimination against women, and explains the methodology used for evaluating how the committee has applied intersectional discrimination. The CEDAW committee makes, re the CEDAW committee makes repeated references to intersectional discrimination and draws the state's attention to women of, mi of minority or race or ethnicity. It is inconsistent and inattentive to women's intersectional disadvantage. Though there are differences between international and national discrimination laws, the CEDAW Committee's approach to intersectional discrimination can open new channels for thinking how discrimination law can respond to intersectional theory. Soon Young Yoon of the United Nations spoke at a Women's Equality Day event put on by the, national, put on by the Women's Intercultural Network, NGO about the city's first CEDAW campaign. Let's take a look. So what brought CEDAW to life? What made CEDAW a part of this conversation on elections? The answer is you, the feminist and women's movements, along with and working with governments and with members of the CEDAW committee. The really, really good news is that this city's for CEDAW campaign is once again breathing new life into this treaty. So what is this campaign? A lot of you in this room probably can explain it as well as I can. But I wanted to share with you my own experience with it and my own sense of what it means to me. When I look at the issues that the UN is grappling with today, I think the number one issue for our entire world is climate change. If we don't get that right, we are going to unravel so much progress that we've made in the areas of equality and development and peace. So our Cities for CEDAW campaign has to keep that vision. And we do have to get gender equality and women's rights there to create a much more resilient and vibrant democracy because it is democracies that is going to help move this agenda to its right place. Most urgently in this election year, can a woman become president of the United States? 
So I think that the thing that we need to most take away from CEDAW and the conversation on CEDAW is the fact that the United States has not ratified this convention with the United Nations. They're one of only six nations. We joined Sudan and Somalia in not ratifying this. I'm curious, why, why not? That, why? That's the question, why not? This is yeah. everything we stand for mm -hmm. as far as women's rights and you know, encouraging women mm -hmm. around the world. Yeah. And we haven't you know, hopped on board on this. Mm -hmm. We face all of these problems in the United States. Why are we one of the few countries that hasn't jumped on this I don't want to say bandwagon, right. but hasn't taken this into consideration at least. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Like, what does that tell the women in our country? Exactly. It's almost like a slap in the face because there, I mean, obviously there are, there are institutional problems that we have that have, that have been brought about since the beginning. And, and yeah, like I just, I don't, it doesn't make sense why, why America or why the United States isn't, isn't going to ratify this. I don't know. I'm, I'm seriously curious as to what, what's going on. Like, no. who is there a certain lobbyists behind this that, that are pushing it away? Or what's, what is going on? There must be something in mm -hmm. there that I'm assuming lobbyists are against or something like that for us not to be jumping on board with this. Mm -hmm. All the other nations, almost all the other nations in the United Nations have done this. And this is a base, basic principles that we stand for. And mm -hmm. maybe it's going to take Hillary Clinton to actually ratify this mm -hmm. and we'll find out. Well, I think, yeah, and another important thing is that um, for for uh, minority women, too, because even just, like, for for example, just in the workplace, minority women do are at a significant disadvantage when you look at all the statistics and, and in uh, the income, the income... Inequality. Yeah, income equality and whatnot. So it's just, it doesn't make sense why we're not doing anything about it. And that's, I think it's kind of frustrating now because... I don't even know what to do to like to push this through or anything and whatnot. And like us being journalists and whatnot, like what what can we do? Expose it exactly mm -hmm. and talk about it. I guess so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think I think that's probably. I the think most a lot of people thing. probably haven't heard about CEDAW mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. haven't don't even know that it, ex it exists and yeah. that we're not taking part in it yeah. as effectively yeah. as we could be. Of course, that, I mean it's just it's just unfortunate for sure, absolutely, but. Moving on, according to the Huffington Post, a federal jury in Los Angeles ruled Wednesday in favor of Derrick Rose and co-defendants Ryan Allen and Randall Hampton over allegations they raped one of the New York Knicks guards' former partners in the summer of 2013. The eight-member jury, which reportedly took less than four hours to reach its decision, cleared the three men of all charges related to the $21 million lawsuit. In a statement provided to the Associated Press, Rose said he was, quote, thankful that the jury understood and agreed with me, end quote. The defense did not dispute that the three men had sex with the accuser that night, instead arguing that the woman was coherent at the time and that the sex was consensual. The accuser wanted more than two years to file, or the, the accuser, excuse me, waited t more than two years to file a civil suit against Rose and his friends, as well as report the incidents to police, a delay that meant that there was no physical evidence, such as a rape kit, to examine during the trial. She said she delayed reporting the incident because she was, quote, embarrassed end quote, by the situation and didn't want to be the reason Rose went to prison after Rose was seen posing with the jurors after being cleared. All right, this, this is absolutely atrocious. Um, the fact that Derrick Rose was posing with mm -hmm. the jurors no. when, they only, when they only took four hours. Three and this, a half. Uh, yeah. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I don't, I, uh, I don't know. It's, it's sickening. Mm -hmm. It's sickening to our judicial system that this reoccurs so so constantly. Yeah. It keeps happening over and over and over again. We keep yeah. seeing this and it's time for it to stop. It needs to stop. I don't think if he wasn't a person in in power, if he didn't have a lot of money, I don't think that he would have been able to he wouldn't have, he would have gotten off this early. So that's why it's just it's it's disgusting that the fact that he does have money, he can buy that he can get that good lawyer that can really that because pretty much they prime they prime the jurors beforehand they prime or they they prime them saying hey yeah we know they had sex but we're talking about this problem over yeah. here so they in their mind they said okay we only have to worry about this and then that's when they came up with their decision that's that's terrible yeah and then going into the facts of the case what does it mean she wasn't drunk enough she wasn't yeah. drunk mm -hmm. enough to say oh no guys I don't want to do this she in the facts of the case she never once said yes let's do this they said based off of text messages that she sent earlier and the way she was acting, they thought it was mm -hmm. okay and they went on with it. But the fact she never said yes, mm -hmm. what does that mean? And the fact that yeah. she waited so long, the two years that they said, well, of course she's yeah. going to wait. 
it's it's embarrassing. That's it's something embarrassing. that no woman wants to ever go through. And of mm. course, she's going to wait because at that point in time, she's probably she doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know what to do because you hope that you never face that situation and you hope you never have to. Mm -hmm. But when it hits, you're shocked mm -hmm. and you don't know what to do. And so, of course, she's taking her time to go through. And now with the case, she had to go and relive that experience again. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think, strangers. and it's just it, that's where the problem is in our society is that women are afraid to come out when yes. something like this happens. When in reality, like men biologically are technically stronger than women in that mm -hmm. sense. We do have more muscle mass and less and less fat. So the the fact that we are able to overpower and men men use that to their advantage and that's that's just sickening because. The, the, there's that's that's when that's what's perpetuating the problem right now is like men are starting men realize that and then they keep doing that and then that like I said that makes that hinders what we're like what we're trying to go for and whatnot too like as we're decent people and, and absolutely I don't know and then we're kind of under this whole umbrella of just of all men all men are pigs like that's you know. that's I hate that and I mm -hmm. try so hard to, to get rid of that stigma but when things like this happen it's just yeah I don't know. It's yeah. just super it's not unfortunate. Acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's not acceptable. And obviously, you know, no woman or no man knows what it is until it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and she, so what? She waited two years. Mm -hmm. And obviously she was humiliated by it yeah. and embarrassed. She just didn't want her name to be released. She remained anonymous throughout this entire trial. No matter how many times, you know, Rose and his attorneys demanded her yeah. to come forward with her actual identity. And when, that's not acceptable. Yeah, and then when they were saying, when they were saying the, uh, the outcome of the, uh, of the trial, she was... It was saying that that she was had her hand, her head in her hands, and her hair was just covering her face because she was just su super sad about no, so like super what embarrassed she's too. Of after, course, you know, no justice yeah. after yeah. coming out no and being strong enough to come out and say it, and then have this happen. Well, of then, course, yeah. what does that tell women? Mm -hmm. Women that have gone through either sexual it's, assault or rape. It's perpetuating the problem. You mm -hmm. have to go through all of this. You have to relive it in front of strangers, and you have to be called a liar from the mm -hmm. other attorney, and you have to be called all these names. At the end, for nothing. Everyone was saying that she was just going. She was just about it for the money and whatnot. But, but she she just wanted she just wanted the actual. She just wanted justice. Yeah. And I, I don't know. It's just it's very unfortunate that that this happened for Absolutely. sure. Well, that's all the time we have on this episode of the report. Tune in next time for more news, views, and info. I'm Sarah Fenton. I'm Nicholas Garcia, and I'm Evan Boyston. Stay fresh, Fulton. Mm -hmm.